So I just watched Joshua Bardwell's and Stu's videos about why they believe that heavier quads can fly faster than lighter quads. I wanna say that there is no world in which a heavy quad can move quicker than a very light quad. Neither one of them are wrong, and I love these guys. They're some of the best channels that I'm subscribed to on YouTube, but the question they're actually answering is why a heavier quad can cruise at a higher speed than an ultralight quad. And I'll go over Joshua Bardwell's explanation real quick again to refresh your memory. I'm gonna use this handicap placard as the quad. So uh, it has nothing, nothing to do with the camera angle. We're usually, our camera angle is at 35, 45, whatever degree tilt. The camera has a wide angle of view so we can see where we're going at whatever tilt that we're flying at. Let's say we're cruising at 45 degrees and you have thrust coming out at 45 degree angle. If you break it up into vectors, you have some degree of thrust blowing down, some degree of thrust blowing straight back. And if your quad, if you want to fly a level and you don't want to go up and down, the amount of thrust blowing down needs to equal the weight of the quad so that you don't drop or raise. If you have a heavier quad, that amount of thrust blowing down is greater, and therefore the amount of thrust blowing back is also greater, and you're moving forward. I don't really think it actually has to do with the amount of thrust, but that's another discussion entirely. I'm going to say that it has nothing to do with your angle, and it has everything to do with the weight, how fast you can go, and how fast the quad will actually carry you. Not everything. There's a lot of other factors as well. But here's my rationale. The logic will tell you that if you have a lighter quad, you need less amount of thrust blowing down in order to hold it up in the air. Therefore, you can tilt more and use more thrust to move forward. You know, that kind of logic. So, uh, and the other thing that they missed is that the lighter quad carries so much less inertia. And I've never really seen a quad track that's just you know straight away turn and come back and then straight away like they're not just straights so when you have a super light quad and you're rushing into a corner at 75 80 miles per hour you can just make the turn at full throttle you just keep going whereas if you're racing something that's 500 grams or even 450 grams you're coming into the turn with a hell of a lot of inertia you've got to somehow slow down turn stop and then go again so I'm usually going down straights, you know, at max throttle. I don't, I mean, you get good and you just, you, you want to go faster. Like everything is slow to me right now because I want to go move quicker. And I'm usually busting down the straights going at like 75, 80 degrees angle. And then as I go into the turn, I start making the turn and I stop. But as I stop with full blast of thrust, my quad starts falling because now I don't have enough downward vector to hold it up. So I have to tip back a little to get that downward vector higher and then move forward and angle forward and move forward. When you have an ultralight with very little inertia, you don't have to worry about that at all. At all. You're kind of on the throttle the whole time, maybe like 70%, 70, 80%. You're coming into the turn at like 75 degree tilt, and then you just turn and you hit the gas and go. You know, the, the quad doesn't fall anymore. So a lighter quad will definitely move quicker. And Stu said something about how he believes that you need to have some degree of handicap in order to fly well. I'm going to say that just being a human is handicap enough. I don't need any more handicap to fly well. I want the thing to respond and do as be as agile as possible as physics will allow in this world so that it makes it compensates for my lack of ability to see where I'm going and the delay in the system and all the other junk that we have to deal with. Another concept that I've wanted to make a video about for a while, which I'm going to be experimenting with a lot of setups late in, in a, about a week or so, a couple weeks when China comes back into service, is the ultralight category itself. So uh, Brian Morris recently started building the three inch setups that are now super powered and actually really fast. And uh, we discussed about how powerful they are and uh, he actually built the setup on a four inch frame and had the same drivetrain as a three inch, but running four inch props. And he was able to get it down below 150 grams, which makes the whole, whole all up weight about 300 less than 300 grams which is nuts and the, the power to weight ratio is about the same as a five inch you're getting similar performance as a five inch but the weight is so low that the inertia that it carries is much much less and that thing really hauls through the air and you can really stay on the gas but what i wanted to explain is that the super light category as brian morris has discovered and through his research and found he actually doesn't gauge the flight characteristics by weight to by power to thrust, like weight to like the thrust compared to the weight of the quad. 
he goes by the prop disc area versus the weight of the quad. And the reason he does that is because he's looking at more the, of the control of the quad in the air rather than just the top speed of the quad. And it makes sense that if you compare the ratio of prop disc, a 250 gram super light five inch dry weight, if you extrapolate that across the different sizes, if you move down to three inch, that becomes a 90 gram quad. In order to get the same kind of uh, performance of a 250 gram five inch quad into a three inch quad, your dry weight needs to be about 90 grams. And if you extrapolate that up, then you're looking at a six inch quad. All of a sudden, your weight limit can go up much higher because you're making so much more power and you have so much more prop disc area that you have so much more control on the air. So this is kind of more of an advanced discussion in that sense. But the gist of all this, I was just inspired to upload this real quick. Uh, I usually try to put more effort into my videos. But the gist of it all is that there is no world in which a lighter quad goes slower than a heavy quad. At some point, you do get a degree of drag, which becomes an issue. But yeah, that's it. Other than that, uh, Joshua Bardwell and uh, Stu from UAV Futures, they are definitely fantastic channels. And especially Joshua Bardwell, he is one of my favorite channels on YouTube right now.